Hi guys, this is Erica from Gokche Capital. Now before I begin, be sure to click subscribe and turn on the notification bell. Linda Shepard had a vision for her retirement, and in early 2020, she made her dream a reality, purchasing a six-boat marina and bait shop on Central Michigan's Sanford Lake. However, just a few months later, it all washed away. But more on the Edenville Dam failure later. For first, one of the most important things you can do to ensure the long-term stability of your construction project is to properly compact the soil. So in today's video, we have the top things you should know about soil compaction. Number one, what is soil compaction? Compaction occurs when soil particles are pressed together, reducing the space between them. Thus, soil compaction is the practice of applying mechanical compaction effort to densify the soil and reduce the space between particles. Number two, why is soil compaction important? While highly compact soils have a higher unit weight than non-compacted soils, which increases their load-bearing capacity and decreases soil settlement and frost damage. Overall, this means that compacted soil increases your building stability and reduces water seepage, swelling, and contraction. Number three, what factors affect soil compaction? The primary factor affecting how well your soil will compact is the type of soil on your land. Not all types of soil will respond the same way to compaction, and certain types of soil, such as well-graded granular soils, are more easily compacted and thus easier to work with for construction purposes. In addition, water content is highly important in soil compaction. In fact, the maximum soil dry density is only achieved when the water content is at its ideal level. There are also several other factors that affect soil compaction, including the type of compactor you use, the thickness of any layers of soil you are adding, the contact pressure between the compactor and the soil, the speed at which you roll over the soil to compact it, and the number of roller passes used. Number four. We've covered why soil compaction is important, but is it possible to have too much of a good thing? Well, the answer, as is usually the case, is yes, you can overcompact soil. The problem with overly compacted soil is that it makes it difficult to grow plants. But fortunately, there are a few things you can do to help overly compacted soil recover. The best way to handle overcompaction is to avoid tilling your soil when it's too wet or dry or even better, avoid tilling it altogether. In addition, there are some things you can do to help loosen compacted soil, including using an aerator, working in organic materials, and adding earthworms. Number five, if both over and under compaction are bad, what is the ideal amount? You'll often hear 95% soil compaction as the target compaction threshold to ensure that construction projects are erected on a solid platform. This means that the soil has been compacted to 95% of its possible density through compactive efforts. However, in general, the design engineer will determine the compactive threshold required for your project based on an analysis and testing of your land's soil. And number six, what happens when soil is not properly compacted? Well, as we mentioned, the primary concern with poorly compacted soil is soil settlement. And settling soil causes a number of issues, including buckling driveways and sidewalks, cracks in foundations and structural walls, ponding, and flooding or overall poor drainage on the land. And in worst case scenarios, poorly compacted soils can even cause structural failures. Which brings us back to Linda and the Edenville Dam. On May 17, 2020, Linda watched the rain start with little more than a shrug. Michiganians are a hardy lot, and a spat of spring rain was not about to stop Linda, not when she had just received permission to open her bait and tackle shop. So Linda stayed open, and she continued to do so over the next two days as the rains continued and the Titoabasa River began to flood. At 5.46 p.m. on May 19th, she was sitting at a picnic table watching Sanford Lake swell and rise over her seawall. Her phone buzzed and she glanced down at the emergency alert. All Midland City residents, it said, need to evacuate due to dam collapse. 
On that eventful May day, the Edenville Dam was just shy of 100 years old. Built in 1924, the Earthern Embankment Dam holds back the Tituabasa River in central Michigan. Just downriver is the Sanford Dam, which forms Sanford Lake, the lake upon which Linda's shop sits. The Edenville Dam was not in good shape when the May rains hit. Yet the main problem went much further back. The dam was built before modern principles of geotechnical engineering, so the sand that composed the dam's walls was simply dumped in place and left uncompacted. Thus, when the heavy rains hit, the buildup of the water pressure against the dam walls caused the uncompacted sand to liquefy. The Edenville Dam failed, flooding the river and overtopping the Sanford Dam, causing it to fail as well. Over 2,500 homes and buildings were flooded, causing over $200 million in damages, which is why you never want to cut corners on things like proper soil compaction. But if you're wondering what happened to Linda, she has not rebuilt. Why do so when Lake Sanford no longer exists? In its place is a grove of poplar, raising a whole new set of thorny questions about whether the dam should be rebuilt and who should pay for the cost if it is. But do you have any stories about soil compaction? Let us know in the comments. Did you like this video? You're going to love our Gokche Land Due Diligence program. We'll make you a Land Due Diligence expert in just seven days. Check it out at gokchecapital.com glad. And while you're at our website, don't forget to explore our $1 down listings at gokchecapital.com listings. Finally, don't hesitate to reach out. You can email, call, or text, and we will respond as soon as possible. So thank you for listening, and more to come.